Hey, we're back with the final episode in our blending mode series. Today we're going to be talking about screen, color dodge, as well as stencil luma and silhouette luma. Let's dive in. The screen blending mode multiplies the brighter pixels of the base image and the blend image. The result is the opposite of the multiply blend mode, giving you a brighter image in the end. Okay, for our first example, I'm working on an open for a kind of a creepy whodunit documentary. I've got this really lovely drone shot flying up a wooded river, and I want to find a picture that I can use to foreshadow uh, kind of the main character's homecoming that takes place in this documentary. So let's take a look at that final composite. So I'm going to put that drone shot down onto the timeline. And then I went to story blocks to look for a silhouette of feet walking and I found this clip. What I really like about this clip is that uh, the perspective of the surface of the wet street that the subject walks on in this clip matches the perspective more or less of the, of the river in the drone shot. And so I'm going to just lay that over the top of it. So I'll double tap that silhouette clip to go into the frame and fit editor and I want to go into the blending modes and here I'm going to select screen mode. Now remember the screen mode is multiplying the brightest pixels in the base image. In this drone shot that's the clouds and the reflection on the water and the brightest pixels in the blend image which in the silhouette it's that light source behind the feet. So if I scroll forward just a bit here in the clip I can really see that light source on my blend clip getting defined where the headlights revealed and I come back into the blended and the, the coincidence of the light source in the blend clip and on the drone clip, the base clip below, multiplies and everything gets brighter. Now this composite isn't quite done so I want to go back to the timeline and have a look at the finished product. Let's show you what I did on this. I graded each of these a little bit. Uh, here I've added some saturation and on the other clip I added a little bit of warm-up and I changed the speed timing on this drone clip to make it a little bit uh, less slow motion. Color Dodge decreases the contrast of the base and the blend images color. The result is the opposite of color burn giving you a lighter image with less contrast. For our next example, we've got uh, another wedding client. Uh, in this case, it's, a, it's an engagement shoot. And the brief from the couple was they wanted a really uh, otherworldly, kind of atmospheric, uh, sci-fi look to their shoot, but in a familiar setting. Let's go take a look at uh, the, what the final product is. So let's take a look at how I built this out. First, of course, I'm going to get the clip on the timeline. And, and then I went looking for something real atmospheric. And in story blocks, I found this really colorful kind of northern lights looking night sky time lapse. And I thought those colors are really perfect for this. So let's go in and just throw that blend on there. And get over into the blending modes. And we're looking at color dodge. So remember, the color dodge mode decreases the contrast of the base and the blend image's color. The result is going to be the opposite of color burn, which is above us here, giving you a lighter image with much less contrast. Let's compare this again to the color burn. In the color burn mode, think of dodge and burn in Photoshop. In this the burn is happening not to the lightness, not to the luminance, but to the colors. And the colors on the base layer and the colors on the blend layer are being burnt together. And that's how you get this really saturated, really dark picture. Go back and do the opposite operation to the color, not to the luminance, in color dodge. And in, the, in this composite, the result is a much lighter image. 
Now, of course, we're not quite to our final look. This isn't the sci-fi uh, wonder sky that our clients were hoping for. Let's go back to the timeline and take a look at how we accomplished that look. So let's go into the effects editor for this blend clip. And in this first bit, what I've mainly done is just slid that sky upward a little bit and sized it, grown the size a bit so that uh, when I apply some edge softening in the next step, uh, it won't be visible along the edges too much. So let's go over to the next one. And in here, this is where we really did the meaty stuff. Uh, we've done a little bit of cropping, slid that sky up, uh, but the main thing you're going to notice is that we really hit the grade pretty hard. We selected the original preset, but then slammed the brightness almost all the way down and, and the saturation up. And we played with those sliders quite a bit to see if we could get to something that felt believable on this science fiction sky. Stencil Luma and Silhouette Luma are kind of two sides of the same coin. They both use the luminance values of the blend image to get their results, but they come at it from opposite directions. For stencil luma, the luminance values of the blend image cut out the area defined by the stencil. With silhouette luma, you get the opposite effect. The luminance values of the blend image cut out the area surrounding the silhouette. For our final example today, I wanna to walk you through uh, my process as I build a sort of a graphics package for a small publisher client. I'm creating a book trailer for them and I know they want uh, large text elements over a piece of video that matches the theme of the book. I also know that they want uh, to incorporate an animated version of the publisher's logo. I knew when I received the client brief that I was going to be incorporating the stencil and silhouette luma modes. Let's take a look at that final project. Just throw this clip on the timeline and get an overlay title on there. I'll open that overlay title into the effects editor. I'll go into my blending modes. Select stencil luma. I can see here where everything is stenciled out. I can see a little bit of the red shirt of the subject in this video. We'll just go back to the timeline now and slide over and take a look at my first attempt at a deliverable for this client. For my first draft, I selected a real bold text because I know I'm going to be stenciling it out. I'll only see the subject through that text. And I can see the rowing through that text, but my client wanted something a little bit softer, a little more classic looking. They wanted to see a little bit more of that video. So let's go take a look at my second draft. got this new font applied, uh, but the main thing you're going to see is that the background is now gray. Uh, open that, uh, opened up the shape and applied a shape, a uh, big rectangle, and then made it gray. And the reason that it's this kind of medium gray is it's got to have plenty of contrast with the title in order for that background image of the lake to show through when the stencil luma mode is applied. And that's what we got. Now we can see a little bit more of that background, the lake that the client wanted. Now let's talk about how we built that logo piece, which we're doing using the Silhouette Luma mode. So you can see here we have our image with the Silhouette Luma applied. It's giving us this kind of black and white photo negative look. That's the blend mode doing its job. Because if we were to apply the stencil mode, this is the look we'd get. Today, for the sake of this tutorial, we wanted to challenge ourselves and we're going to have to trick the silhouette mode into giving us the look we want. To finalize this composite, all we did was apply our X-ray effect. That turns this negative back into a positive. We also applied some dark contrast to the image uh, and make, to make that black really pop. If we move over to frame and fit, you can see I adjusted the position and centered the tree. I also 
crop the second tree out and soften the edges a bit. And finally, I keyframed the size and position of the tree to put it up into the corner as a bug. I think our pretend client's gonna like this. That's it for our Blending Mode series. Thanks for joining us. As always, we're gonna leave links to these demo projects in the description below so that you can download those and tinker with them on your own. Um, there is an absolute ton of great deep dive information on blending modes on the internet and we'll leave some of our favorite links in the description too. If you have any questions about blending modes or anything else LumaTouch does, please give us an email. Support at luma-touch.com.